Hey friends, let's continue our deep dive into the Hulu show, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. I'm Leah Carey, Schmecks and Relationship Coach, and I explore how pop culture reflects our understanding of relationships, gender, intimacy, communication, and more. With The Mormon Wives Show, we're specifically looking at how faith and purity culture impact people's ability to experience healthy schmexuality. Keep in mind that reality TV features real people, but their words and circumstances are highly edited. My comments are based only on what we see on screen, which may not actually be a true representation of anybody's real words, thoughts, actions, etc. I'd love to hear what you're thinking, so please drop a comment. Also, of course, like and subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. What is appropriate involvement in a child's life, and what is pushing the boundaries of really not appropriate at all? I love you, but you don't always make the right choices. I just don't know how you choose these guys, like Dakota. What's wrong with Dakota? Dakota has an addiction. That doesn't define who he is as a person. Okay, so first I want to say, you know, in the introduction, I talk about how this is all highly edited. If you listen closely to this conversation, they have edited the crap out of it. Who knows what this conversation actually looked like, but... Given what we're seeing on screen, first, we hear the mother say, you have made a lot of really dumb choices. Wow. Taylor talks before this about how her family doesn't sugarcoat things. I'm here for that. But there's a difference between not sugarcoating things and telling them that they're not doing a good job as a person. So for her to say, you've done a bunch of dumb things and made dumb decisions, I take issue with that, especially when your daughter is already in pain. This is a woman who has just gone through a major international scandal that led to a divorce, and she's now having to figure out life with kids as a single mother, rebuilding her empire or whatever it is. Give her, please, a minute. And then to say, I don't know how you choose these guys. Dakota is an addict. I'm going to stand with Taylor on this one. Having had an addiction issue does not define who you are as a person, does not make you any less of a person. Addiction tends to be the result of some kind of agony that is seeking an outlet. And that is the outlet because in this culture, we don't teach people how to feel their feelings and deal with their feelings. Is it any wonder that we then see a lot of addictive behaviors in our population? So to put somebody down as being an addict, I have a real problem with. Hey, this is editing, Leah. I wanted to clarify in case it isn't completely clear. This does not mean that you are somehow required to bring them into your life. You get to take all of the available information and make an informed decision about what works for you. For instance, my abuse history includes both an alcoholic father and multiple partners who misused other substances. Being involved with someone who regularly uses any mind-altering substance isn't going to work for me because it makes me feel unsafe. The problem here is that Taylor's mother is trying to dictate what Taylor's boundaries should be, and that's not okay. Using Dakota's past against him as a weapon just makes it all the worse. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled video. Just really uncool. <laughs> like, uncool, mom. I'm not here for it. I'm also distressed by the fact that she and I are probably the same age. <laughs> Let's keep going. You have two kids that you really have to think about. They're trying to heal 
in which you should be healing. Okay, so when mom says you should be healing, I understand what she's saying. You're not that far out of your previous relationship. You're going through a divorce. You should be spending time by yourself in healing. For some people, that's really true. For me, absolutely, that's true. I need to spend some time just by myself, licking my wounds, regathering my resources. Absolutely. But some people grieve and heal in different ways. It doesn't mean that I get to tell other people that they shouldn't engage in the way that their healing and grieving looks. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you've certainly heard me talk about touch and how we all have a basic touch need, especially when we're hurting we need a certain amount of touch in order to kind of feel right. Touch creates the chemicals in our brain that then help to, uh, so I'm going to say this in a super non science way, but sort of help to lubricate the neural connections in our brain and the neural pathways. So literally, when we don't get the touch that we need, our brain gets a little crispy. It's not functioning at its premium level. So if we're trying to figure out what the heck just happened, my life has just blown up and I no longer recognize it. One way that some people will deal with that is to get touch through various intimate means. It is morally neutral. Some people will get touch by paying for it. Again, morally neutral. And I actually am a big fan where there's a financial exchange because somebody who is not actually available for a deeper connection isn't making promises that they can't fulfill. They're not leaving a string of brokenhearted people. Making it a financial transaction takes all of that stress away and allows the person to just get the touch that they need and then move on. That was a very long tangent on getting touch. So basically, mama saying that you should be sitting at home and crying. For some people, that's going to be true. Obviously for Taylor, not true. You need to let that settle because ultimately me and your dad are going to be the ones that pick up the pieces. Okay, now I'm going to go full screen for this because this really, this, <sighs> telling your child that they have to make specific decisions because it's going to make you happy because that's what is acceptable to you and because you are going to have to pick up the pieces after they figure out that this is a terrible, wrong, bad decision. That is some real problematic parenting. Taylor is an adult. She has children of her own. She gets to make her own choices. And for mom to say, well, if you mess this up, then I'm going to have to come in and fix it. That is suggesting that Taylor is not capable of leading her own adult life. Mom can put some boundaries on what is acceptable. She can say, you know what? I don't like the choice you're making. I understand you're going to make it anyway, but I need you to know here are my boundaries. You cannot move back in with us. You know, I'm whatever, babysitting one day a week, and that is the limit of how much I can babysit. She can put limits on how available she is for emotional support. Um, there are lots of ways to create boundaries so that you don't become overloaded that are not telling your child, you don't get to make your own choices because I don't want to have to deal with the aftermath. That is not how this is supposed to work. That is really, as far as I'm concerned, really toxic behavior from the mother. I can actually, let me give you a personal example. So 
I had two friends who were starting to date. Now, I love them, adore them, both as individuals. I did not necessarily think that they were going to make a great couple. I had a feeling that that wasn't going to go so well. And so I sat down with each of them individually when they started dating. I actually made a coffee date with each of them. This was pre-COVID and said, I want you to know I'm thrilled that you're dating my other friend. I think they're fantastic. I love spending time with them. And if this goes well, I would love spending time with the two of you together. However, I also want you to know that if this goes sideways, I am friends with both of you. I will not be caught in the middle. I'm not going to support one of you over the other. Or if there were ever a breakup, take sides. You are both my friends and that's how it's going to stay. And they both heard that, appreciated that I was up front. And when they did eventually break up, I was able to follow through on that. And they both knew where they stood with me. So that was not me going in and saying, this is a bad idea. The two of you are not going to work. You shouldn't even try. And I'm going to judge you if you do. That's what we hear from Taylor's mom. It's instead, here are my boundaries. That is what real support looks like. Real support does not look like you're making a bad choice. And so in order to make me happy, you should stop. That's not teaching a person how to make good and strong decisions for themselves. It's not setting anybody up for future success. Okay, one last little clip to put the icing on the cupcake and the cherry on the sundae. I'm going to try to not even respond to this. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to play it for you and leave it as is. Taylor has just told her mother that she thinks she might be pregnant. That You're so, you're, you're so stupid. Why would you put yourself in that? You're always screwing up everything. It pisses me off. I hate it. I hate it. Taylor's mom is blah, making me blah. That's that's all I have to say. I'm Leah Carey, Schmecks and Relationship Coach. Don't forget to leave a comment if anything in particular has struck you. If there's anything specific that you'd like me to look at in future videos, like, subscribe, do all the things, and I will talk to you again soon.